All right. Hey, Firesiders. Yeah. Good to see you guys again. You guys look great today. Been working out. Uh, welcome to episode six, six yeah. of Fireside Tats, the premier tattoo education podcast education. of the Mid South. <laughs> uh, we have a special guest today, Lisa Mack. Hi. Yeah, thanks for coming, Lisa. Yeah, thank you. Um, we're gonna talk today about photographing your tattoos yeah. and and my tattoos. But not David's tattoos, because he doesn't photograph uh, I'm tattoos. I'm just horrible at it. I'm going to learn something today. I'm sure of yeah, it. I think we'll both learn something today. Yeah. Um, so we're going to get into that. Um, a little bit of housework first. Uh, wanted to thank SVU, our very own Ivy Dinosaur, for doing a, a custom intro theme for very us. Nice That's awesome. Very, very nice. And also... Uh, Sean, our man behind the scenes here, got us hooked up with a band called Tanks, who did another. Just when we thought that no bands would let us use any song, we're covered right. up with bands letting us use their songs. And really they, they, they didn't write us a song, but they did give us permission to use them. And I've already got one in the works, and they're really good. I had never heard of Tanks before. Have you guys heard of Tanks before? Yeah. Yeah. They're good. They're good a local uh, band. They're a local band. Are they local? Mm -hmm. uh, they're good. They're super complex. A lot of instrumental stuff, too. Like the song that I ended up using for the intro, they can make five songs out of that. Yeah. There are so many changes in it. It's right. really good. So check out Tanks. Tight, tight, tight. We'll band. try to, yeah, we'll make sure that we, that we plug them and tell you how to get to their music. And the album that I bought, you can name your price on. Even better. That's a steal. Right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, what else are we going to talk about? Um, oh, we had, a, we had a Facebook question. Yes. Uh, the other day. Someone who, if I understand it right, it wasn't very specific, uh, is not a tattooer, but is designing a tattoo for a friend. So I'm assuming that they draw a little bit, right? Right. And this tattoo is either all text or incorporates a lot of text into a design. They were concerned with what type of text to use, what kind of font, maybe what reads better, what holds up better, what should they not use, uh... So, real, we'll, we'll try not to spend a ton of time on it. That's something we can probably spend more time on uh, later. I, I first, I, I'm not crazy about words and tattoos. We at talked all. about that. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just don't like them. Uh, so, so I'm biased in that way. Uh, but you had a couple of ideas as far as types of fonts that you like. Obviously, cleaner fonts are going to be more legible and hold yeah. up. I mean. The longer. And that's what we were talking about. I, I tend, I think it tends to remember where you're drawn to. Often, a lot of like cursive style um, types um, or you know cursive style fonts often have uh, a lean to them, an italic lean to them. And often you want to kind of avoid that, depending on if you're putting it into a symmetrical tattoo or not. If it's a very symmetrical piece, or you, you basically are, are are putting it into an unusual form, you often don't want to bend it at the italic kind of bend, and then try to actually have a legible font. Um, um, and one of the first things that our, one of my art teachers ever told me was like, don't make up letters. Don't try to invent your own font. You'll often find that it's a lot harder than going and finding a nice font. And uh, it, maybe that entails just buying a type style book. But we were talking before yeah. about Goddess being a really good script. Popol, Exquisite being a really good one. Um, there's a couple of really easy cursive type styles that if you can mimic or get into basically changing your own like having that as your type style or being at least aware of a couple that you can probably easily draw out um i think it uh, probably would help I me mean, go ahead and buy a book on fonts yeah um, don't rely that, on a computer to do them um and you that way you won't uh, also rely usually on having computer graphic like bending a type style to a point it's, it's much easier to actually draw you know a curve to put fit your, your space put your easier. font on that curve uh, for, and just for try us, to manipulate but there are people it. that are using programs that scan their drawings in that can make them do whatever they well, want. that's this like, we got maybe not be what like said, it, if you're trying to do it hands on. I mean, yeah. I think it's important to probably learn the kerning between the letters and yeah. and then basically you'll have a lot more awareness. Like if you do have like imagery around it, um, you'll probably like I said you'll probably be a little more aware than trying to throw it on and start manipulating it if you if you haven't got a really good overall look to begin with. So yeah. I'd pick a cursive style unless you really want a nice like old English Block. or Gothic. Like yeah. I think it depends on what you want it to say. But, yeah, and where it um, sits. And I, I think have the, to admit I don't like. I don't like italics type styles. I don't like putting them into a lot of things unless they really are 
um, fitting the form. So right. try yeah. to stray well away said. from that. that. Fit, yeah, relating to the rest of the design. Um, that's the biggest. That's the wow. biggest point I think that that you just made. If you have a right. symmetrical design and you try to throw yeah. uh, a, a type style that that doesn't follow the design very right. well if you have a very symmetrical straight right. design and you're trying to put italics in or something like probably, that then you're making sure that it works with your design super right. important and the last probably thing is like um make sure that if you um are, if you're picking a type style if it's only a couple words or a couple phrases make sure you're looking at those major usually the the larger letters not the basically lower style type like um you'll often like like a certain kind but the maybe the the one letter that's probably the most important letter is often you know illegible you can't, you know, yeah. probably even get a good, you know, uh, design out of using something that you can't even read. So, I mean, yeah. if your first large letter starts with a P, like Paul, and you want to, you want to start looking for a type style that has a really beautiful yeah. P. You know, if there's only just yeah. like two or three, you know, two or three letters yeah, in it, it just depends on what it says. You know, often people will start looking at the larger types, the larger fonts, and forget that almost all of their letters are in the smaller, you know, and so yeah. look at those lowercase letters and that's probably more important than the uppercase letters. Yep. Thanks for the question. Yeah, awesome. thanks. Yeah, good answer. All right, on to business. Let's talk about pictures. Ta Photographing. Photographing. Work, which we Tattoos. know, I mean, I, six, like I, said, I know very little, very yeah. little. We're both so bad at it. So bad. That's why I'm excited about this show. So, um, so Lisa Mack is a professional photographer. Trained. A trained professional photographer. She is an entrepreneur. She has her own studio, her own business. You do a lot of portrait work. I've a lot noticed. Of portrait, yeah. Um, kids and families too, babies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, uh, also, um, a painter, a fine art painter, not a house painter or anything. So, <laughs> uh, fine art painter. Um, what else do I know about Lisa Mac? She is she can put more weight over her head than most tattooers. I'm sure of that. Really Definitely fast. More than me. I'm yeah. sure of that. I guarantee it. I'll put my yeah. dollars on it. Uh, so where did you go to school? Memphis. No. Memphis. University of Memphis. Yeah, I was University. an art major. Perfect. So. I, I wasn't. I never took photography classes, or I kind of taught myself. So I'm not actually trained, but I guess I, I am. I trained yeah. myself. Oh. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, to me. To Lisa. Right. Um, uh, okay, so we'll start. I guess the easiest way is um, for us to throw out, uh, since you don't tattoo, we'll throw out the most common issues that we have, and then maybe you can point us in the right direction. Does that sound yeah. like a good game plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, so the one, one issue that we all deal with is we're most often photographing fresh tattoos. Um, so they're irritated right. um, they're swollen sometimes depending on where they are uh, they um, I mean you know they're shiny because we've been wiping them and putting ointment on them um, I mean other than the common sense stuff like wipe the ointment off before you take the photo um, uh, we'll, we'll start there what um, how, how might we deal with with photographing uh, with getting a clear image that doesn't have a lot of glare, that doesn't have a lot of um, redness, is there a way we could deal with lighting to help offset redness? I'm making stuff up because I really have no idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, if you have a D if you have any kind of DSLR nowadays, you can pick them up for a couple hundred bucks, not much at all. Um, I know Canon makes. I don't know even the names. I think like the Rebels are yeah. like the pretty basic. Get a kit lens and. Um, those are pretty common these days, and they actually are really phenomenal at, at doing the kind of things you guys would want to do. Or just if you're if you're wanting a nice camera just for your own sake, they're great. So um, so that there's a lot of if you kind of try to learn a little bit about your camera other than shooting just like in the, the regular um, like the you know the the what's it they call it, what do they call it on the uh, Auto yeah, auto, auto mode. mode. I, yeah. I had a moment. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't think of the word. Yeah. yeah, auto mode. You can do a lot with that too. But um, there's a, there's a lot of different settings that can help you with the different colors of skin tone and all that kind of stuff, or make it more vibrant. Or, but it's mainly knowing. Tr just it, it's very basic. Just knowing a few little sh um, settings that you can set that will help. Um, and we can go more into that later if you if you want okay. to. Like I won't go crazy photo. Yeah. Talk. <laughs> well, so so people like like me that are using a like my iPhone camera, I'm fighting an uphill battle anyways, then because I don't have a lot of those settings. I mean, it, would it, it 
it's it's worth the investment you would say to buy a camera that's not attached to your phone well i if if having really nice photos of your artwork is important to you then yes it's okay. it spending a couple hundred bucks I mean, you could spend a couple hundred bucks out drinking and having dinner with your friends. So it's like, yeah. just set aside a little bit, go get you a nicer camera. Yeah. And like, but you know, w when you are shooting with an iPhone, it's basically limited. You know, you know, you tap the screen, take photos, a little square pops up, and it tries to focus on it. But that's 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 it. There's no dimension. There's no. There's yeah. nothing that sets those photos apart. Yeah, yeah. I, I notice a lot of people now are like taking a more artistic approach to their to their photos um uh you know used to the only time you saw uh a photo that was not straight on mm -hmm. was in a tattoo magazine you know when they were like on the cover of a tattoo magazine or something like that now you have a lot of people that are um sometimes i think the filtering and stuff that they use is just overkill i think they use it to distort yeah maybe bad tattoos or like I think that's probably what it is that happens to... a lot but um i see people taking um uh we were talking a little while ago about jeff gogway who i think i mean he's, we all know he's a great tattooer he's a he, but he's a, his photographs are really nice uh and i see him literally like it looks like he's stopped tattooing the person is still laying out flat on a bench and he takes the photo from like this crazy angle and then you know and adds some filter to it so people are trying to get pretty artistic it's not so much just illustrating the tattoo as it is um the, the photo being part of the artwork i guess I don't, I don't know how else to put it uh so that that's something i've never really considered i always like if i tattoo your arm mm -hmm. i just like get as close as i can focus on it and tattoo the arm so that's, mm -hmm. well, that's interesting that's well that's in photography like with portrait work i was doing headshots today and um just telling my um client to move her her shoulders and tilt her head and then me standing on a chair completely totally changed the whole look of the image it made it added drama it just made it cooler not yeah. that you have to do that but you don't yeah. want to take away from the beauty of the tattoo but perspective is totally key I think with any kind of photo even if they're iPhone photos if you're if you're if you're being creative it, it works yeah there's no <laughs> reason to stop when you're taking the photo you've been creative up to that point why would you like i mean i've never thought of it that way but i i see people doing it but why would you um why would you not look for a more interesting angle i guess you have the mindset right. that you want to illustrate exactly what you did or you want to like capture exactly what you did but but sometimes you can well i think that. and we were you know talking before it's like i think sometimes taking those at angles you'll you'll knock a little bit of the glare that we do get from the the flash often bouncing right off or like just the light that we have in our room we have a lot of harsh light and well, white light in ours and i think it's very hard especially on angles to get any kind of really good you know photos because of that and often i notice and it, like i said maybe working at higher angles or something like maybe that would take a lot of it out i have to admit i'd I've, yeah. I don't know much about it, but I think that maybe, uh, like I said, taking them at angles often makes her a better photograph yeah. anyway. It, it makes um, sense. It reduces a lot of light, at least in our room. Yeah. I know that. Yeah. But um, I don't know. But what kind of backgrounds and stuff, though? Do you, I mean, do you... I, I, I mean, look around the shop. There are no right. backgrounds. I, I mean, that's, I think but that's... But taking them maybe with, on a black mat or... Yeah. A, I mean, we you, often you, have to... We just take them against, like, what is our blue, like, uh, wraps or drape sheets yeah. or something like that, yeah, which is I, not I've, probably the best way of doing it's it. It's probably but. not the best way. I've been to your studio before, and you have quite a few, like, backdrops. You have a big piece mm -hmm. of tin, and you have, like, I guess, you know, you can add, like, drapes and all this all this kind of stuff, and you have a lot of flat colors. I guess when you're trying to illustrate a tattoo, it makes sense to try to avoid a lot of competing colors and yeah, stuff like that. Yeah, if you're simply just trying to show off the tattoo the artwork then i would suggest black i mean yeah. you can't go wrong with black i mean and um i don't know it just if the for what you're doing i mean it wouldn't i don't know it wouldn't make sense to do anything fancy but you can buy like a silver little oh, a simple little square piece of velvet you know yeah. i don't know yeah. maybe three yeah. by three or something like that just clip it up or whatever on. and then i don't know yeah. I mean, I notice you have artwork everywhere, yeah. um, and so it's really cool. But if one thing I notice is there's not really any tattoos displayed anywhere. Like I don't think in the whole place. No, we don't. Then a lot of that's intentional uh, okay. for our shop. We don't. Uh, that makes sense. Yeah, we don't. It's a it's it's a mostly custom shop. It's an all for the most part. It's an appointment based shop, and we try to encourage people to 
be creative and let us be creative and we don't give them an easy way out where they can go oh i like that how much does that cost yeah yeah and, <laughs> so, and usually in our in individual stations we'll have like drawings that we've done or things like that up that are yeah. basically what we've been working on or some of the immediacy yeah. i have I have customers that like to sit there and like go through the last like week or two of the drawings I've done, but yeah, after that we don't put a lot of them up. Um, we do put them online from time to put, time. And we, but, have, we have book portfolios. Right, I mean, we have that's portfolios the, that you can flip through to see our work. But yeah, you're right. We don't put a lot out. Um, what about? Because I like. To, uh, I have to admit, I like seeing artwork from my friends I and painting. We've known a lot of painters. We've gone oh, to school. I love, I mean, I love it in here. I was just. I was just saying that yeah. I, I guess when you come into a tat tattoo shop, you would you think that you would see it displayed, yeah. and I don't see it, but yeah. I, I love all the yeah. artwork. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people are surprised by that. People ask, like, do you have anything we can look through? And we do. If we you do. request it, we do right. have books of Flash. We just don't, we don't advertise them, really, because um, uh, I mean, we don't want to yeah, do Yeah, for them, the honestly. average person who walks in off the street, and they just want yeah. to see some banks of imagery, it's, I think it's a good thing, but we don't yeah. rely on that. We tell them we do custom work and kind yeah. of go from there, but that's, yeah. you know. Um, I, I get I, I make this assumption because anytime I finish a tattoo in the daytime I go outside to a shaded area and I take a photo or like not yeah, a direct light area, and I take a photo and the co the color those photos are a thousand times better than any photo that I take inside I assume that if we're if we're like setting up a studio to and we're trying to light it, um, uh, it, it sunlight side or like daylight the light of the world is ideal is that right <laughs> the light of the world, <laughs> like the world. outside light uh, sunlight <laughs> I mean I don't want to say sunlight yeah, because sun it's not direct like, but like, like indirect right. sunlight yeah. is that what you're trying to mimic is yes. that like the best thing you can have <laughs> yeah the light of the world yeah the light of the world yeah. <laughs> uh yeah, you want indirect sunlight basically or shade is awesome shade is the best time for taking photos mm -hmm. um but I mean cloud shade I guess I wasn't being yeah. clear like like if it's cloudy outside it's it's like like a white blanket over a light that just kind of like a, a sheet oh. and it just like makes this big soft box you know what a soft box is it's like the it's like a big flash that's shaped like a square oh, okay yeah and yeah. you shoot light through it and it it makes the most awesome like really bright cool light so oh, okay but not too sharp so what if you were setting up a studio i mean we have track lighting with these bright fluorescent lights in here on one side and then like one light that is broken off in the bulb <laughs> over there so we can't have that light I don't know. This one's never worked since I've been here. Definitely uh, out of balance. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> so yeah. I mean, you know, we're working pretty hard on our lighting in here. But like, say that say that we were going to try to set up the studio. I mean, is there a type as a halogen, like a yellowy light or a white light, better just or or? It goes back it... to like what cameras, you, camera or camera settings you have. If you have like one of the like a DSLR. You get it's actually fluorescent light is good, but you mm. ha, it, as long as your camera is set right, it's like oh. this kind of situation doesn't work. But um, yeah. you can buy well, it. But if you are not shooting with one of those fancier cameras and you're just using your iPhone, like a tungsten light, it's actually really good. It's like, it's like a buttery oh. yellow light. Oh. It's uh, mm. it's uh, it's basically the kind of lights you put in your lamps and stuff like that. Okay. Tungsten. So kind of like what's in this lamp Yeah, but you can somewhere. go to Home Depot and you can buy those little floodlights or I don't know what they're called. They, they clamp, you can get them to clamp, yeah, clamp on. floodlights, yeah. Are they called yeah. floodlights? Yeah. Those are great. Like I remember my art teacher in college, mm -hmm. um, she would clamp those on the around on the um, on Yeah, stands. for like still lights or whatever. To, still to lights are for, for um, figure. Uh -huh. Huh, okay. And they're super, they're like $5. You can clip them onto you know, clip them onto something anywhere. Yeah. But in, in our case, if we're trying to avoid contrast, avoid light and shadow to get a nice even light for the sake of a tattoo, if we used one of those lights, would we, I mean, I guess we want it more indirect. Because anytime, because I have lamps that I like clip on. Yeah, someone took my good lamp, but I'm sure it's around. Uh, we, uh, we have lamps that we clip on, and anytime I try to shine that directly on the tattoo, it washes it out. I mean, oh it's yeah, yeah. Super bright. So, what I is it ideal to like point it at the wall or, or or like I guess you were talking about the light box like diffusing it some way is ideal. So if I had something between that light and my subject, well, it just depends on what you like. Like a, it depends on the material. It has to be kind of opaque, like a like a sheet uh -huh. or even like thinner than that. Like um, it would be something that you could do. But sometimes um. If you have like a white wall, which you don't, but if you, well, you kind of do. Yeah. Even if you had like a, a piece of poster board that you could flash it to, 
that would kind of bounce the light off and it would kind of make this big bright light so that might even work okay yeah. um it's it's tricky i mean for someone that doesn't know anything about it because it's you want a lot of light but you don't want like a direct right. light and you know usually the when i think of when i want something lit like if i'm working in the workshop you know i like point a light on what yeah. i'm working on yeah. but you can't really i mean when you do that it ruins the tattoo it washes it out so um Okay. Well, it, the angle, like, say if you're if you're tattooing like an arm, having the light like this would wash it out. But if you had the light like this, yeah, it, you know, depending uh, on the distance, it might help. Okay. I mean, I always shoot so from just, above. With by my subjects over huh. there, and my lights always from above like this. Okay. Huh. Well, maybe that's something to try because I do. I mean, it's not you know I don't really move my lamps around a lot. I just kind of shine them at the tattoo, and I found that 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 wasn't very good. One. Um, one other thing we were uh, one of the few things that I found that actually works for me we were talking about redness and irritation yeah. uh, which there would be no reason you don't tattoo a lot of irritation or tattoo you don't photograph a lot of irritation people yeah. don't want to show that part of their bodies yeah. off <laughs> so, so what I have found that works with that is that um, uh, is I will uh, have someone go look at the finished tattoo uh, I'll put a pa- I'll put a paper towel over the tattoo I will hose it down uh with cold with just my water not right. soaps my Straight algae water. bottle of, of water which is usually pretty cold and i'll just let it sit and i'll break down my station and just let it sit under cold water and a lot of times at least for a short period of time that will help pull the uh redness out of the skin and you give it a few minutes for the redness to like naturally dissipate a little bit especially in the lighter parts of the tattoo if you have a lot of light blues and whites and real pale like pastel colors a lot of times that will um It'll help. I've also seen that really warm water sometimes will do that too. Warm like water too? actually increasing it, and uh. then that way when the air contact hits it, it actually cools all together. So it takes a lot of the general redness down pretty quick too. But like trying to basically give it a, like a quick hot towel, like you would, it 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 stings for half a second, but then it feels so much better. Sometimes yeah. that'll take it down some of the general redness if you really need to huh. take a photo too. <laughs> Um, we often get basically stuck though with often clients that can't come back and so we're like uh, we're what we we're talking before about you know you've you've got one third of this new area on a tattoo yeah. that's got fresh work and the rest is basically healed and peeled and yeah. it's like how to get a nice photo between two extremes it's like uh, yeah. it makes it a lot harder and it, it is um, a lot harder that's a hard thing to hide and I, I wasn't even thinking along those lines I was thinking about just one shot tattoos but but we don't do it. We don't have a lot of those. Not a lot of one. I mean, yeah. every once in a while, you know, yeah, you so get that, to get those one done in one day. But yeah. we we generally that's what I have a real problem with too. It's like then you have a general swelling in some of the areas, and then um, like I said, general redness, and then some of it looks great. So like, yeah. how much do you need more time? Do you you ask them to come back? It's like yeah. often it. Like I said, I don't even want to take a photo like that. You know, it's like yeah. uh, and then come and, back in like two weeks. Right. Come back and that's in what, and that's three days. I, come back and. That's why we end up with these huge tattoos that we never have photos of, right. because we're like, I'm just going to get a photo of it's healed, later. and then mm-hmm. and then we don't see those people for however long. I mean, I have full sleeves and giant back pieces and <sighs> like tattoos that I've got 30 plus hours in that I don't have a photo of. Oh, it's yeah. sad. It is. It, it it's is. terrible. It's very sad. <laughs> uh, it's like artwork that just walks out the door. It's like selling uh, yeah. a painting. It is there. Yeah. Yeah. Then, then so, you never but, saw yeah. it. You never yeah. got a chance to photograph it. So yeah, that's and that's pretty crappy. I'm horrible in progress photos. You're a little better. You take you take some I, of yours and I and, do take them in progress. But it's kind of going back to. Uh, one of the previous episodes, I take them because it, it, until I finish it, it's always a work in progress. So I, I literally put that back into my sketchbook yeah. pro program and draw into it even after I've started it just to see what I because I might make changes. Right. Yeah. How far you can go. Yeah. 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 So I, I do that. I do it some so that I can show in progress photos, but then mostly I do it so that I can continue to work on the idea for the piece. So. That's a good way of get we're working back into it without killing a drawing too. You know? Yeah, yeah. You can make decisions that aren't permanent. That right. Way. You can just yeah. go back stages if you want. Right. Kind of yeah. nice. Yeah. So that and yeah, I do that. I I but um like I said, my biggest problem is um uh is it seems to be the the lighting, especially mm-hmm. whenever I'm uh, uh especially whenever it's nighttime and we have to photograph in the shop. And I think it would be worth you know for any shop and uh, definitely for ours to spend a little time to find you know we have a drawing room in the back we could paint we could paint a black strip or we could just hang a black curtain yeah. on a curtain rod and that we pull across we definitely talked about that yeah, and there's right no reason not to, not to do that 
Yeah. Um, have our own little studio just for taking photos. Yeah. yeah. I, I guess I've been hesitant to put in the effort because I just don't know what... Even if I had a black curtain, I'd be pissed <laughs> off if I, if I painted half the wall black and was like, I'm, it still looks like crap. I like the idea, I like the idea of a sheet. Just a, a, maybe sheet, just to yeah. having a bar, a little drape sheet. It's be your own, you know, a curtain against the wall, I guess. And yeah. You can, yeah. You know, well, um, maybe then it's not, you don't want to paint it black, you know, a big square on the wall. Yeah. yeah. I think the curtain's probably a good idea, uh, but the the lighting is really my, my one of my biggest questions. And I, uh, Overhead and, and lighting, that helps. Uh, the that might... light, maybe moving where where the lights coming from. I had, I, you know, I, I didn't think about just using a piece of paper or something to help diffuse it. But I guess experiment it makes more mm -hmm. sense than anything, just to see. Sometimes though, when you really feel like you don't know anything about a subject, experimenting is just don't don't even try. But not. Yeah. I'm not saying you should. I'm saying I feel that way often <laughs> yeah. when I want. Like if if wait, I wait. First of all, don't even try. Don't even try. Well, listen, well, I, okay, so I do paint. I've been painting for a long time. So I thought, you know, graffiti is so cool. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I, I really, really want to try graffiti. And then our gym asked me to do graffiti on the wall. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I bought, I was like, yeah, I'm a good artist. I can, I'm just, you know, I'm just tag something real cool up there. It was the most ridiculous thing I've ever tried. It's just trying to make something look cool with it with a spray paint can. Yeah, yeah, and it's and there's so much design. I've I've run into the same thing trying to design graffiti based tattoos, yeah. uh, and I found like the first time I ever did it, the um, <laughs> like I put it off to the last night because I was like, I mean, it's graffiti. I used to do that on my folders in school. It's no problem. <laughs> then I realized that there is a very fine line between bubble letters. And graffiti, yeah, you know, true absolutely. Graffiti. It's Abs just like wow. There's just really it's hard like an to fake that. Girl did this. Yeah. It's really hard to fake. That. Anyway, that was a yeah. one of the last things I tried that yeah. I was just like, what was that? <laughs> yeah, it, I mean, there's. I, I gained a, a new respect for for graffiti. Trying trying to do it myself. We have a, a guest artist that comes through here, Nico, Nico from, from so. uh, France. That um, that's that's good, and he really. He spent a lot of time doing it when he was younger. Yeah, I don't think he does it much anymore. And he he's graffitied a lot of our fence out back. And oh, he so. uh, and he goes out and he lays something out. And he's like, "Oh, this is shit. I don't like this." And we're like, "What are you talking about? That's the baddest graffiti I've ever seen." He really, it's, of course, he's good he's, at it. Uh, yeah, he's, he's good at self-deprecation too. Yeah, he's there. good at that too. Uh, but uh, yeah, he, that's that's a. It definitely is an art form in itself, and uh, it it definitely takes a lot of like just the way you had to lay it out. It takes a lot of thinking in advance, well before you get to the final product. It, you realize you just described a, lot of layer. a tattoo artist. Just well, now. that's just it, and it it, yeah. it really is. He he is a tattoo artist, and I think yeah. that's a. There are people that can kind of jump into it because they do have so much forethought in the design. If you can lay that out, you could probably, like I said, you could probably lay a stencil out for a tattoo. If you can take it in stages like it needs to it's a lot of time effort and yeah absolutely a, a lot of it translates uh, there i think are a, a lot, lot of, of tattooers that had a graffiti background yeah, not me not me <laughs> right. uh, i've got a bubble letter background bubble letter yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've tried to design tattoos for friends because they'll say oh you're an artist i really am thinking about you know wanting i want this i want these kinds of flowers we just you know just in all of my drawing i think yeah i can handle that it's a flower whatever they are so flat and just not non-dimensional just yeah. completely ridiculous and seeing all the dimension that's what kills me i don't know i just like i i consider myself an okay artist but when compared to like a tattoo artist that adds all this shading and the i mean it's crazy it's it, yeah we we actually had an episode um two maybe episode four i think was um <laughs> making a design tattooable and we got into people having their friends draw their tattoo designs and the challenges uh, because you really you have to have a technical understanding of tattoos to know what's possible and what's not and so people bring in a lot of times really nice drawings right. that we have to completely change because they're just not tattooable and not that we can't physically put them in but you won't want to look at it in five years right. ten years you know it can so do what? more damage than good because of yeah. some of the way that some of them are drawn yeah I just, stylized i want to know what makes it like what is the most common thing? Sorry, I'm like interviewing you, no, you know, good. but no. I'm, I'm I, I love tattoos. So, but I, I, I'm what what is the most common thing people bring in a tattoo and say, you know, I want this. What is the most common untattooable thing that people bring you all the time? Like, what makes it untattooable? Mm. What do you think, David? 
I don't know. That's a, I think, you, look, we talked before about just the size relationships. A lot of people, they, they'll come in with an eight and a half by 11 piece of you know, paper with, with a beautiful drawing that their friend did, but they only want it you know, two by two or three uh -huh. by three. So normally I think it's a, it's a size relationship thing. We often, you know, we talk about tattoo ability, but that, I don't think there's one overall problem that people, like I said, a lot of lettering, if you're trying to put too much hand drawn, hand done letters, like then I just won't even do it. You know, like here, I, I don't want to do something on you that looks so ridiculous that you, you're going to have problems with later. It's like, we'll pick another type style or we'll do something yeah. else. But I think it's size still, like the, most people do not realize that the tattoos have to be a little larger, that you haven't really have large bleed outs or. That's, um, yeah, one of the most, it is one of the most common Common it issues. just usually you know is. from the, uh, from the <laughs> tattoo on your finger what an issue it's size tiniest, can be. Uh, I mean, it, you know, it looks it. <laughs> it looks nice. I mean, it, uh, it, but it, um, I get so many compliments on it because it, it it does have some dimension, which I'm like, it, how did you do that? Yeah, you can tell in the process how tedious it was uh, and, and and what a tight little area. So size is definitely size is definitely uh, an issue. Are you going to zoom in on it? No. No. Zoom in on no. tiny touch. So size is definitely an issue, um, and also. A lot of times, people do not push when when they bring in designs, uh, not realizing that, that that putting that design on skin is not the same as putting it on a white piece of paper or a white canvas. Con, you have to push contrast. You have to push values way further for a tattoo to have longevity than for most anything else you can put a piece of art on, yeah. uh, because it has to age with the person. It's it's subject to the elements. It, you know, I mean, it, it, the sunshine and water and everything in between, and and you really have to plan for that. So, so you find yourself pushing your, you know, you, someone might bring in a really nice pastel kind of layout. I think we may have talked about this in, in that episode about tattoo ability. Uh, uh, that, that might work really well. A watercolor, a gouache, something that's really kind of laid out, light, and and you may see it and go like, oh, I love how soft that is, and it's like, well. I love how soft it is too. On that, it will right. look like crap on you, uh, and it's just yeah, the way it, the way it is. To, it, and it and it just takes time uh, to to you have to do tattoos, watch them age, and determine what how you could have made a better right. decision. Yeah. You can make some, you can experiment like in little little fields, little you know, like you said by maybe working on your friends and working and experiment in some little areas that you may work into but you'll see that later you have to have there's a standard um if you start wandering from it too much you'll definitely have problems and it's the longevity because your name's yeah. attached to it and so when you see your friends come back and you'll see those tattoos age you you'll know what you can and can't get away with and that's yeah. i mean that's not the best way of learning that's why hopefully yeah. we tell you in advance don't, yeah hopefully don't, yeah, well, don't now, try some things yeah and now there's so much more information out there which is a good and a bad thing but um the whole reason we started, we started talking about this podcast or even put this podcast in, in the works is because um, I started watching YouTube videos, like tattoo instructional videos, which whenever I was starting, I would have thought, oh, how great would it be to have an actual tattoo or show me what to do on my phone and then I can do it in my kitchen at home and, uh, and, and, uh, uh, and that is a good thing. But I saw so much terrible advice. Ooh. I mean, I saw so many bad tattooers putting in bad tattoos, um, you know, showing, showing, uh, showing you how to put in a nice line and they're putting it in on their own wrist or on their own hand. And it's like, you watch them, <laughs> look how solid that is. <laughs> look at, see, that's what you would do. And it's like, whoa, that's not what you would do. Oh. Don't do that. Uh, so the, those selfies, selfies. Yeah. I guess, uh, <laughs> that's probably the right selfie. name. It's probably the right name for it. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's a lot more information out there today, uh, and there's a lot of good information, but there's probably more bad information than good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because everybody has a camera. But if there's like one thing that I think that's still it's still a size thing. Size Usually, is the thing. You're the right. people that bring in stuff, it's a size, yeah. you know, relationship issue. Yeah. Just too small. Nine usually. times out of ten. I mean, yeah. if if they bring in a nice drawing, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, you know, there's a lot of people that think their friends are artists. Right. They bring in drawings and just go, whoa. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. I mean, uh, we understand too. You get you, have, you get similar attachments to thing and like, oh, my friend drew it. I want to just my book. But often it's like they don't think like you were talking. Like maybe thinking in dimension, like how to move object like on the place that they really want it to the dimension that they really need it. Like just small things, like uh, torque in a design, or yep. you know, a little omission goes a long way sometimes. 
sometimes. Yeah. And you, you just never know. It, they get to, yeah, like how to move it so that you, you can see it in another dimension where it works yeah. better for any place, you know, yeah. like. Miley Cyrus twerking? No, 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 no. Twinking. Twinking. <laughs> like, like literally, like if you're going to move an object yeah. in, like in dimension. Yeah, you know? I know. I know yeah, what you're yeah, trying right. to say. Yeah. Yeah. I was just. Yeah. yeah. No, <laughs> not like Miley Cyrus. Not like Miley Cyrus. <laughs> you know, you just twerk it. You twerk yeah. it. Twerk. <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot of times people don't present things from the most dynamic or the most attractive no. angle. So you can no. take the same no. idea and, and present it from a better angle, build a, a build a better composition. But, yeah. I have a question. So, like, what is like the coolest tattoo magazine you get in the mail? Oh, like, man, we don't I have to I admit, know. I don't flip through a lot. You know, back like when I was like, getting them, international tattoo was always my favorite. Yeah, that but was that's been years. Well, it's, I, you know how like there's the cool like music magazine. There's the cool yeah. you know whatever. Is there, there's not like a there's a cool like. CrossFit magazine that comes around, circulates. Yeah. Is there like not a cool? I don't, I I don't read enough of them to know. But when I did, back before, like, you know, when I was when I was first getting into tattoos, I would sit at Bookstar in the magazine department and just right. read not just tattoo magazines, but every magazine because I was broke and couldn't afford to buy them. So we just sit there and read them. And International, I thought, always had the 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 widest array. They had a lot of really old. I don't even know if they're still around. I assume they are. I would say. Well, my I question was, I wonder like how the photographers did those. Like, what, those. what? Yeah, mm-hmm. what did they look yeah. like? Like ba- back then, like, it was what are mostly... the coolest, most awesome, stylish tattoo photographers doing these days? I don't know. That's a good question. That's probably what we should yeah. be looking at. To... Well, a lot of them, I think, they, you know, they'll go to conventions and they'll have. Wait till they, you already have like heel tattoos and people with a lot of them. Yeah. And so you can literally, you know, set your booth up. You can set it up as like you do, like a portrait photography, and then have that ability to kind of take really nice ones. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's what most. I say, and then most tattoo magazines do that for their filler, and then they'll get a basically a sign an artist, or like sometimes they'll get submissions in from an artist. But a lot of times, they, if they find somebody at conventions, they'll take a lot of their work there and mm-hmm. kind of get them to do a like I say a guest spot in the magazine later. I mean, yeah. but a lot of them are their own photographs, and you know, I have to admit some are good, some are bad. You can definitely yeah. tell, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There are a lot of great tattooers that are terrible photographers. That's, man, it's unfortunate. That's, man. Uh, where do we stand on time? Right, about forty. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a quick break. We're gonna come back. Lisa has a project that she's starting out. That she's gonna work on that. We're gonna talk a little bit about. Yeah. Maybe recruit some help on. See if we can help get the ball rolling. So, right. quick break, uh, and we'll be right back. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, all right. Welcome back. Yeah, we're back. It was a good break. We had candy. I had candy. Yeah, I didn't have any candy. <laughs> I had beer. Beautiful. For my first beer of the night. If I sound more intelligent tonight than in previous <laughs> episodes, oh, no. or if this is the worst episode ever, let us know. Um, it's not. No, it's not. No, okay. I meant, I meant <laughs> I for like, my, oh, no. not because of you, it's because not. I haven't been drinking. That's what I meant. Uh, oh, all right. Photography. So, yeah. So let's, um, so you have a project that you're trying to start. But really, it hasn't gotten off the ground yet. You have a, It's an idea well, right it's, now? It's an idea that I love and I, I've been wanting to do. And now that I have a tattoo friend, yeah. Yeah. I'd like to do it. <laughs> we can pull some strings. So what? run through it. Uh, like just give an overview of what, what it's about. Well, um, I was telling Jake earlier that I'm kind of obsessed with tattoos in a weird way. I, don't, I only have my one little tiny one. But um, my most... I, I'm being an artist. I see it as artwork. It is artwork, and I'm. I just love that. I'm just like people are walking around with artwork on their skin. That's like the coolest thing ever. Mm. Like I just look yeah. at it like that, like like it is, and I feel like people don't see it that way. Like my parents are old fashioned. They don't like tattoos at all. They think anyone that has tattoos can't read a sixth grade elementary. But no, I'm just kidding. They're yeah. they're not like I'm, they're not like that. I was exaggerating. Yeah, but you know what I mean. They're. Um, and, and some of them, I know that I, I've seen some that are terrible, but I, I think it's when you really save up that one that you really want to, that means so much, like you have like a story behind it. That's, that's what I love. I like, I like that a lot. So being a photographer, I've had the chance to photograph a couple different tattoos and I really love that. Like I love incorporating drama in facial expression and posing with lighting and contrast with this awesome artwork you know I love the color and everything like that and and what I want to be able to start doing is photographing this artwork and and have a story with it like I'm I'm always the, the I'm always interested in the story of things like when I would go to plays 
like I would instead of like really paying attention to the play I would read like the bios of all the actors in the plays yeah. and I'd be like okay like I love like backstories on everything mm-hmm. so I like I like um, behind the scenes of anything I like reality shows to some extent because I like to see the story like what's going on and like really so I want to be able to start having photos with the story like in a book like I want to I just think that so would be, be cool yeah so it's not so much I misunderstood it a little bit earlier because I thought you were trying to maybe illustrate the story just through the photo and I was wondering how you might pull that off but you want an actual like the the you want a, a written story yeah uh, a written story with, like whether it's in a like blog or, or book form like have like I just know so many people get like like my my boyfriend has like a, a weird tattoo on his it's not weird it's it's just like a it's a letter with some squigglies and like not it's not like an epic tattoo or anything by any means but that kind of like he has this weird little tattoo for his grandfather um, and he tells like the story of why he got these little things. It's from his grandfather's favorite movie, which is an old western. I like. I was like, mm. wow, those little squigglies mean that. Like mm, I, yeah. I thought that was so cool. So like, I, it, and it more like elaborate tattoos. I'm like now I really, I really want to know what these stories are. So like yeah. I want to incorporate a really awesome dramatic photo with the story behind it and the person's point of view telling it. Yeah, yeah. So you're not, you're not necessarily looking for giant. Tattoos. It can be anyone with a story. If, if people are interested, they have to be in interesting. Involved. Like I, mean, I, I, I mentioned the yeah. squiggles because yeah. because. <laughs> but you don't mind it being a small a small tattoo if the story. That if it's goes interesting with it enough interesting. with the story, yeah. because. Does it have drama. to be a good tattoo? Yes, it does have to be a good tattoo. Oh, well, a lot of people have good ideas and bad tattoos. Bad tattoos. I know sure. a couple good tattoos. But I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Discover the narrative behind the illustrations. It's good. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. I don't know. I think a lot of people who are my type men maybe not so much men maybe don't wouldn't care about a story you don't like look at yeah i like stories man You're yeah salty. i love stories no, nobody no, looks no. like at a picture of a sexy lady and is like i wonder what her story is yeah. <laughs> just probably like oh hey girl yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no, that's, that's true. true yeah yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. my <laughs> girls are like oh i just wonder where and, yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah, I think it's something that's overlooked a lot. I think it's overlooked by tattooers a lot. Um, I, unless something really catches me off guard, I don't have a, I don't, I'm not really in the habit of asking people why they're getting the tattoo mm. that they're getting. Do you? I, I, I ask questions only because I do like to know sometimes the full narrative so that I can, if I can expound on it, if I can push yeah. it a little bit more. I, I like, I like narratives. I, yeah. I love, you know, coming up with designs based off of. A lot of hidden imagery or messages and, and stuff like that. And if going to be sitting there for six and a half hours, you got to have something to talk to them uh, about, right? And for longer sometimes, <laughs> yeah. And sometimes they don't want to talk about it, but often I think it's good to, that you, they realize you know their story. You you know what kind of imagery. You know why you're putting it in. Yeah. And so it's not meaningless. Everything well, you're putting in. Especially if you're, yeah. they're like giving you free reign of doing whatever you want. There's the, you know, I wonder, do you get okay. a lot of people who come in and explain like a situation? Well, you know, I really love... I love elephants because they were special to my mom, and you know, like, do you, like hearing the story yeah. helps you decide what direction. You don't want to draw like a cartoony elephant. You want to draw like a, you know, I don't know. No, that's exactly. I mean, that's why I like talking. We we generally like talking to our customers a little longer, yeah. um, and we like to have consultation just for that, so we can get the narrative, yeah. so we can understand yeah. why they really want something. Some people don't have they don't they have no imagination, so they're relying on kind of like bank imagery and stuff. While some people really want you to go all out and give them. Yeah something that they can't even think like fully out um maybe because they're hard to have maybe they're having a hard time thinking it or it's sometimes gets it gets too personal for them so you kind of have to help them guide them a little bit yeah you know? i might have misspoke a little bit earlier that i guess i was thinking more when i know what i'm doing uh if uh, if we're helping you're the, the to jerk over here is like, yeah, I'm yeah, like, if, I don't care yeah. about their story. Well, if 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 I need, <laughs> shut up, shut if up. we're trying to lay out the design, if we don't have a solid idea, then then yes, we get into the backstory more. Yeah. If I know exactly what I'm doing, I don't really make an effort. Uh, yeah. But 
I, I, I like, probably so sometimes I'll you get should. through an yeah. entire tattoo and and not understand why they're getting it, but understand what they're getting. Um, so I don't I don't yeah. try to like be so personal that maybe I'm being intrusive. But, yeah. Yeah. Some people um, once you open them up, they won't yeah, shut up, right? Well, yeah, and some <laughs> people true. some people may we I mean I've I've definitely tattooed on people that I've worked on for hours and hours and hours and never said a word to me. I mean, literally sitting in the same room for somebody for three hours plus and they say hello and sit down and thank you and that's it. It's awkward, yeah, it's very awkward, but I can I, I yeah. can I've got a lot to think about other than that. So I think usually it's like you keep on task and, and like I said, some people are just not very chatty. They don't Yeah. I think sometimes it's less uh, I know tattooers that, that uh, would rather every situation be that way. One thing that yeah. I think, to, one unique challenge that tattooing brings uh, is that uh, you take some, generally creative or artistic people are, are introverts. They spend a lot of time alone. They spend a lot of time in their studios. Uh, they're, you know... Um, that is uh, the truth. And then you take them and you... You work and you, alone. Yeah, you, well, you work alone and then you take them and you shove them up against someone and you make them work, you know, or they no one makes them you you know you're an introvert you you find yourself up against someone working mm -hmm. in their personal space and and you have to be social in a lot of uh and you have to have some level of bedside manner i mean you should anyway so you uh, and and it's yeah, hard used to it, and right. a lot of people you know i think for a lot of creative people uh tattooing that that's the biggest challenge of tattooing is just being around other people and it's having the same to thing talk for to photography them. Mm -hmm. um i meet new clients all the time and you know, I look like a jerk if I'm if I'm not acting interested in you know them, yeah. and not that I'm not at all, but I I I would rather not have to talk. I you know I would like I, I don't know like I have to kind of force myself to get into small talk mode when I'm around them, and I'm just yeah. I'm not that com I'm not comfortable in that. Even though I talk a lot, and I like to talk. Yeah, yeah but, but small talk. Yeah, when you have something to talk about, and that's the that that's probably that's probably it. Small talk for for a lot of a lot of introverts that's the hard thing if there's something to talk the about hardest, then yeah. that's that's fine but you know what do you do how is how right. is everything going what like the you know uh, that's a hard thing for a lot of ta a lot of artists to, to do and tattooers have to i mean if you're um, if you're going to have any kind of career and, and, right. and bring people back yeah, if you want to have contact with your clients person. too i mean that's the thing it's like in the end it's like uh they're not just your canvas you know they're they're really supporting you and your lifestyle and the work that you're trying to do um and never kind of forget that that you yeah. know do you ever they, consider it like yeah. an honor that someone chose you oh yeah to... i mean especially people that will choose you year in and year out and be yeah. walking billboards for you and shout your name to the clouds, you know, if, if you ask them to, but yeah, I mean, there are people that are very dedicated and, but they know you put a lot, if you put a lot of effort in and you really are trying to do something, they really respond. And that's what you're going to, you're going to have to get that out of people too. You're like, you're going to have to show that you really are doing your best or whatever you think your, your best is. And yeah. Yeah. I think so. So if, um, uh, so we're not really, uh, looking at, uh, well, I mean, I guess tattooers could could help in this respect. But people that are listening or watching this podcast, if they're if they think they have stories, if they think it, they can help you get the ball rolling on this project, how do they? Uh, w w what's the best way to get you? Well, they can um, they can contact me on my Facebook page, L Max Studio, um, or they can email me at lmaxstudio.com, and I would love to talk to them if they have a, a cool tattoo or if they are interested in tattoos and they. They have some that they're not, you know, too upset to share about. I like to hear that. So. Yeah, yeah. So nice tattoos, preferably. They don't have to be giant tattoos. Mm. A good backstory is probably the most important. Yeah, just um, somebody who has something that really means something significant and why and, and where it comes from. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you do you find? I I meant to ask you this earlier. Do you find though that like I've heard that like some of the portrait malls, like portrait studios in the malls and stuff, have been shutting down kind of left and right. Do you find more people that are trying to get like say portrait style tattoos and I mean portrait style work other tattoos or just in general now like yeah. as a I mean I, I guess it's kind of a nice say not a lost start but a lot of people still need that kind of work done or whatever but now there's not a lot of places to get it done at you know yeah, like, yeah, I'm trying to think there's that. no like you can't go to Sears anymore and get your photos okay. taken anymore now they, 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 most of those a are lot closed of down, down. Huh. Um, yeah there used to be huge franchises of, uh, that's just what it is photography so. has blown up in a different way as far as portrait and family style photography yeah. or you know 
everyone, you know, on their Christmas cards has some kind of fancy, awesome photographer that poses them in front of a barn and whatever, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, Sears and Sears and all that's kind of like a it's old news. If you want generic, fake painted rivers on the backdrop. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> yeah. well, you know, you can't yeah. just gather the family and go to Walmart and get <laughs> yeah. your photos taken. Come on, let's get in. <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I mean, do you, I mean, do you get a lot more business now or like people that are probably a little more, I would say, successful or mogul that kind of want stuff like that done? I mean, I don't, I don't know. Do they, stuff. Anything. Like, like you said, your family cards or what kind of, what kind of people, I mean, what kind of work do you do a lot of? I mean, if I, I do a lot of, a lot of family and babies and kids, yeah. but if, uh, my favorite babies, is, of course. What now? The, the babies. babies. Oh yeah, yeah lots of babies. Because yeah. there's there's always babies born, you yeah. know, always, always, always. But I That's do, our I do. Problem. Yeah, biggest. I do. Um, oh yeah, well, I bet. You mean from just like dismembered stomachs? No, no, <laughs> no, no. no. Oh. Just like more people. Oh uh, yeah. Oh, okay. oh yeah, more people. Yeah. I thought you were saying like you get a lot of fix up. Oh, we get a lot of babies. Oh, no, I say I, I, I mean, mean as, no, as actually, a society, uh, that's our biggest problem. All the babies. I'm just. I'm, I don't even think that's true. I'm just that's talking. Good. Uh, yeah. He loves babies. He loves. I love babies. Yeah, I have flavor over that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I <laughs> hate babies. Jake does not. Jake hate does babies. not hate babies. Yeah, we'll, we'll set up. A, but I was wondering, the we'll men's kind of website. work do you get a lot more of now? I think that would be that. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Um, I, have, I, have, I actually it's a mutual friend of ours. Um, he got he and his wife both got some really nice, awesome tattoos late later in their age, fifties, I guess. Six. He's sixty. 60s. Yeah. Hmm. She's fifties. Um, yeah. And. They both committed to some really big tattoos. His they is did. His covers his back. Hers is like a half sleeve. Yeah, she has a uh, half sleeve and then another nice size yeah. panel here. And in in her sixties, and I was I, when I met him, I was like, wow, that's so cool. I mean, the fact that you committed to something like that awesome as like your first couple tattoos. I mean, it's yeah. they're really bright and pretty. But they came to me wanting photos for their anniversary, like thirties. 33rd anniversary, but they oh. wanted photos with their tattoos. With their tattoos yeah. So I got a photo of them, of, of him with, you know, they were, he was shirtless and she had on a black top, but um, he has a tattoo on his back and she has her arm. She's, um, he's got his back to the camera and she's kind of hugging him on the yeah. side and her arm is up. And so yeah, they it's, really it's nice. like a really beautiful, hmm. artsy, gorgeous yeah. photo. And they have like some, th some things in her, her tattoo represent each of her children. It's just like really neat when she tells a story. Yeah. But yeah, um, it's, like it's that really was a really cool thing I had. And that, and I also did a, a shot of my, one of my best friends has a, when he had his baby, he has a, a sleeve and he, I got a picture of him holding his little newborn on the sleeve and it was it's one of the coolest pictures ever. It's on Pinterest and people, yeah. when they look up newborn, I, whenever anybody looks at newborn and tattoo stuff, it's, it's, it's a really yeah, cool little there. newborn. Yeah. 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 I haven't seen that one, but the other one of Mike and Ruth, uh, the, the, uh, the couple, I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're really nice and they, nice. and that was a, um, uh, I mean, they took a really go big or go home approach yeah, they to really tattooing, did, which is totally I mean, respectable. Just, uh, yeah, in their you know in their fifties and sixties, uh, they have some really big, really mm -hmm. visible tattoos, and I think that shows the uh, you know um, how far tattooing has come. I'm I'm always blown away by how many older people say like make some passing comment about um, that they're obviously interested in tattoos, but then then completely. Uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know the term. Like uh, the, the discounting the idea that they could ever get one because right. they're too old. Like, oh, could you imagine right. me coming in and getting a tattoo? It's like, right. well, yeah. Why not? It's like because I'm 65. Well, well what most people like to say don't is have an age. that when they don't get tattoos or they don't want tattoos, they're like, I don't want that when I'm old. You know. Yeah. And and I'm sure you probably hear some things like that. I don't know. Oh, I yeah. do a lot. I yeah. hear people say. Well, you know, I want a tattoo, but I or I, if I got a tattoo, I'll get this. But then again, I don't know how I would look old with that tattoo, you know. Which is, you know, tit yeah. for tat. Some people have those opinions, but like, think about the people who don't get tattoos until they are old. They're like, well, finally, I'm old. I'm here. You know, I avoided yeah. tattoos my whole life because I didn't want to have them when I was old, and I'm gonna get me a fresh, brand new tattoo. Yeah, yeah it, shows, <laughs> it shows how far they've come. Uh, I remember uh, some years ago, I went. Uh, we were at a convention, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I went to. I don't think you sat through it, but I sat through a. Uh, uh, what's his name? Jack Rudy. Um, uh, oh, one he of his had classes. Class, yeah, one of his classes. Master class. Yeah. And um, uh, he's a tattooer that's been around a long time. Uh, a lot of black and gray stuff. Beautiful and, black uh, and gray work. Yeah, and he's. Um, he uh, 
he made that he he was talking about that someone had asked him some years back and he's an older guy he's probably in his 60s now i would guess but he uh they had asked him someone had asked him a few years before that what he was going to do with those tattoos when he was old he was like well, I painted my house and that's gonna wear out. What am I gonna do when it gets old? I'm just gonna paint it again. He's like, they look terrible. I'll go back over them. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I don't, you know, you don't, you don't do work and then say like, what's that gonna look like 50 years from now? Right. You know, otherwise, why would you tile the floor, or paint the walls, or anything yeah. else? So, yeah, I thought that was an interesting perspective. That is an interesting perspective. Yeah, yeah you're yeah. just gonna look old and cool. Yeah, you're gonna look like yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, um, well, good. I hope that. I mean, hopefully, we can help and and that will. Uh, uh, you get get the ball rolling. Get some people that some with some interesting tattoos with some drama. That, with some drama or yeah. If anybody has questions about tattoos or they're like me and they love tattoos, but I I don't have a lot, but I'm really interested in them. I mm. offer a tattoo workshop. Mm. That um, oh yeah, I remember you doing that yeah, a while back. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talk about that for a second. Well, a, um, I wasn't there, but it was an interesting idea. No, I, but I want I would like to have you there maybe next time. Um, mm. I've only done one, but. Um, I had a good friend of mine who was a tattoo artist in the past. Um, who's also he teaches, and so he just w- was a good combo for somebody. I was like, "What would you think if you came and just talked about the background of tattoo? Like, I want to know like what some of the symbolism means, or why do people get Chinese artwork on their ha- arms and not, you know, Swedish art? I mean, like, why is Ch- the Chinese? You know, I, was, I had a lot of questions, uh-huh. and so he came and he talked about it, and we had." Um, and I put out a, a memo on Facebook, and we invited a lot of people. A lot of people came, maybe not knowing what to expect, because who would go to it? We served beer and wine and had food um, and Sounds cigars. Like we had tattoo c- was there, yeah. Yeah, we yeah. had cigars, too. We had cigar breaks, so we talked for a while, and then we had a cigar break. It was really fun. But um, there were people there that, um, in the beginning of the class, we each stood up and told what, why we got our tattoo and what it means and if we plan to get more, and it was really fun. It, I noticed each person as they started talking, like the first person didn't want to stand up and so then the rest of the people started to stand up and talk about their tattoos and what they might want to get in the future and everyone kind of bonded and then we um, designed our own tattoos for fun. We had books up there with different Asian designs or any kind of design and then um, our tattoo artist Art brought pins and he, he did like freehand tattoos on people. It was really fun. Yeah, yeah but that's a... Uh... I'd like yeah, to I'm have sure you was. next time. Yeah, yeah, I'll draw on people. I draw yeah. on people all the time. All the time. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think that's you know it's a good way to to introduce people. Did you get anyone that was not tattooed, or was it mostly yes, tattooed? Yes, there was somebody who was not tattooed, and there were actually the, and this is why it'd be great to have you because the this other guy actually got some business. Like they they wanted yeah. tattoos and. Yeah. You know, so for you, if you're needing extra clients, which I don't know, you're kind of a popular guy, but... <laughs> yeah, because I'm um, tattoo shirtless. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, but um, anyway, it's a good way to get business for yourself because people can kind of meet you and see your style and everything. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's a good idea. So the, the one point we'd have to make is for either of these, for either the project or the tattoo education class, uh, you'd, you'd have to be willing to travel to Memphis to get to come to the LMAC studios. To, <laughs> right, but if you're in Memphis already, but if you're in Memphis the tri-state already, area. Do I? Hmm. We could shoot it. Yeah, that's true. That's oh. true. We could, we could film but it. But I like, I like the Tally. idea of having like, like a tattoo outreach or something like that. It sounds well, that's, good. That's yeah. We definitely have done we all, talks like that at some of the universities and stuff, and it's always interesting. Well, that's yeah. the thing is we all bonded through that because oh. all, all the ones who were there that did have tattoos had a story, and we, like... I don't know, just something, I, I have a passion about people too, obviously, mm. but um, I, I just thought it was cool for people to come together. A lot of people were dates, like date nights, um, having wine and food and beer and talking tattoos and having cigars, what it could be more, yeah. I, mean, I don't know, getting, it's like pretty I, awesome. Getting free hand tattoos drawn on you. Sounds pretty nice. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 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 yeah, I mean it was yeah. just so, maybe, so you know, fun. If and anybody's like hearing this, you can make your own local version. Yeah. Reach yeah, out to your community. True. You never know. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's a, yeah, that's a good idea. I, I just gen- like, because if I, if I ever plan on getting another tattoo, I just have a lot of questions in general, you know. Mm. I, I always do. So just yeah. if there's other people like that who want, maybe want to learn a little bit more, it's good. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Uh, where, do we, where are we on time? Do we need to wrap this up? Yeah, I think. Uh, just over an hour. Over yeah. an hour. Okay. Um, so... LMACstudio.com is it a web? There's a website, yeah. yeah. LMAC Studio. M-A-C. Right. M-A-C. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, studio.com. Uh, check out Lisa's work. It's really nice. Uh, and if you 
uh, if you want to get in touch with her about the if you have a, tattoos that and, and, and a story in the background and want to help out with that project it sounds like a great idea um, go to iTunes and give us a five star review even if you hate this podcast why are you watching it asshole <laughs> five five star reviews uh, you can lie it's not going to hurt anyone's feelings for you to say <laughs> this is a great podcast when and these guys but really I'm, know what they're talking about I, because like, I think I'm, we learned a little bit today we did we did yeah. we learned something one get a good camera yeah. <laughs> get a decent camera go ahead and just spend a little money on it yeah. Yeah. two maybe a little back, I haven't done that, black backdrop to. Work on some lighting. Yeah, and play. I think that's the lighting. Yeah, yeah that's the biggest thing. Diffused. Learn. Wait, I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. you're still not going to take a picture of a test. I will. I'm going to try and take more <laughs> yeah. photos. Yeah. It's just ridiculous. I mean, I, I'm so bad at it. So yeah. I really do. I get everyone at the shop to take my photos for me. Yeah. <laughs> Vanessa's <laughs> tired I'm just of it. Around the corner, you call yeah. me. Yeah, tired of it. A few years, a few years back, actually, was year. It was when I first started at the shop. Uh, I was brought aside. I'd only been here maybe a year or so. And um, I was brought aside by the owner here. And she was like, I really like the work that you're doing. Um, please don't take any more photos of your tattoos. Call someone from the front desk to come take your photos. And I was like, wow, am I that bad? It was like the tattoo in motion. Like the tattoo just passed. Just everyone. I'm like, I'll cut the edge of it. Right, I got it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What's that blurry screen? Yeah, exactly. I'm better But I think that. that's when we, no. used to, we used to print a lot of stuff when you had yeah. to. Like now you can, of course. And that's another thing that we didn't talk about is take more than one. Like, like take yeah. several, edit, like edit yeah. out different of ten, angles, edit different different angles. Angles. and that's Change I think the lighting. We, we that's talk experiment. About that, but that, yeah, that experiment, which she did say actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. Great. Well, this is a good one. Thank you. Yeah. Questions. Thank you. More questions. questions. If you have any more yeah, questions, send us please. More questions. Hopefully We'd love that. A friend text. of ours said that he lo- he thought it would be good if we had a phone in show, but I, I don't think that's gonna happen. Yeah, because we know exactly. Oh, we've got someone online. People that would phone in. Yeah. All right. Thank you, guys. Have a good night. Thank you so much.